Alrighty, welcome to a four and four cube draft. We are back using Alpha Frog's cube. It's good to vary them around. We got a six squad today. It's me, Ely Cassis, Luis Salvato, and Alpha Frog, the perfect team. Battling against Team Jabro, Dan, Slax, and Connor, who I've drafted with a few times as well. All right, what do we got? Well, we have kind of a weak pack. There's Chrome Host Seed Shark, Fire Covenant, Fractured Identity, Wasteland, <laughs> a pair of Moxes, not the right ones. These cards are all cards that I'd be pretty happy to get fifth pick and not very happy to first pick. I'm kind of considering Wasteland, maybe draft like a land style deck. I think taking Mox Opal or Chrome Mox isn't unreasonable either. Fractured Identity, of course, is fine. I'm a little lower on five mana cards than I used to be. Chrome Host Seed Shark is also a card I've been pretty impressed with, honestly. Um, I'm just going to go Wasteland. I don't know. It's colorless. We'll, we'll see where we end up. This pack is pretty mid. Ooh, here's a new card from Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Get Lost. Destroy target creature, enchantment, or planeswalker. This controller creates two map tokens. Pretty good removal spell, honestly. Poo, this pack's even worse. Um, I guess I could take Umazawa's GTA. I could take Third Path Iconoclast. If I'd taken like Mox Opal, I would have taken Iconoclast. There's Chandra. Chandra's a fine card. I could just take Get Lost. It seems like a pretty good card. But Creature Enchant or Planeswalker hits a lot of things, and getting them two map token tokens really isn't the end of the world. I guess I'll just take Chandra. I don't know. All right, well, now there's a Minsk and Boo and a Mind Twist. This was a good pack in a Prismatic Vista. I'm just going to take Minsk and Boo. I think it's the best card, and it goes nicely with Chandra. Now I have two good red four drops. So, plus Wasteland. This could, could end up being part of it. Ooh, another really good cat card. This is a huge Mesmeric Fiend upgrade. It gets Flying and Lifelink. Still a two-mana 1-1, one, one, and it exiles a card from their hand until this thing leaves the battlefield. Um, there's Elvish Reclaimer here. This pack doesn't go very well with my first couple picks. So I could take a Nyssa, because Nyssa is good when I'm ramping into it with all these cards. I could also take Deep Cavern Bat, I feel like is a pretty good card. Jay's Friends Prodigy is a good card, but not really with the cards I have. Same with Flicker Wisp. Maybe I just take Nyssa. Yeah, and I have like Red Green Planeswalker Ramp as an option here. All right, I mean, this has gone all right. I have passed Slacks. Fracture Identity and Mind Twist so far. So the two, the three colors that I'm not right now. And as well as some like Moxes that maybe he took. I don't know. This pack has Prime Time. It has Lorien Revealed, which is a very good card. Toxic Deluge, which is a pretty good card. Blade Splicer. Leaving Skydiver. Chromatic Star is also pretty solid. I could take Savannah because it's a white Greenland. Lorien Revealed doesn't really seem like the pick, though it's, I don't really like passing it. But... After passing Fractured and Mind Twist, I think Deluge, Lorien Revealed, Chromatic Star are all pretty reasonable cards. I can't hate them all. I could take Primeval Titan. It's just, do I really want an ex another expensive card? I don't really. I don't really want Chromatic Star that much. I think I'm just going to take Savannah. I could easily be Red, Green, White, and having a dual land is pretty nice. It also opens the door for, like... Uh, Arid Mesa to now be a red-green duel, that sort of thing. And I don't know, these are all these are all cards that are good at the top of a curve, so maybe if I end up taking Savannah, I can supplement my curve with cheap white creatures or something along those lines. I don't know, it's a possibility. I don't I'm not thrilled with the start, but here we are. Alright, well this pack has a Mishra's Workshop, which always makes me sad to pass. But there's a Sylvan Karyatid. There's also Lotus Cobra, but I think Sylvan Karyatid is so much better. Yes, this doesn't have the double mana turns. But they can't kill it as Hexproof is really hard to kill and adds mana of any color every turn, whereas Cobra can sometimes fail you when you need it most. Yeah, so I'm going to take Sylvan Karyatid here. And that was just a good pickup for what I have. I, I need Acceleration. This is Acceleration and Fixing across multiple colors. So a pretty big advantage here. Okay. I mean, honestly, kind of, it's like, it's actually more like this. These are all just like spell or uh, creatures, like permanents that I curve out with. So I've got no interaction yet besides Wasteland, and I guess Chandra provides a little interaction. Well, Chandra's interaction and Minsk and Boo actually is also, you can throw a creature at them or, or one of their creatures. We're going to get two cards back here, or one card back here. It's going to be Revel Arc probably, or Goblin Guide. Maybe Voldoran Epic here, but that one actually has a little bit more 
applications outside of just mono red. Voldar and Epicure is kind of nice and like the red black reanimator style decks. It's a good card with recurring nightmare. So we're looking like green ramp, which is an archetype I've actually drafted for a little bit. So I don't mind it. I mean, Minsk and Boo is just the best card in its respective pack. The the Wasteland pick has actually ended up working pretty well. Because had I taken, say, Fractured Identity or Mox Opal, I feel like I wouldn't have been in as good of a spot. I guess with Mox Opal, I would have picked up Workshop and Chromatic Star. And who knows? Maybe I'd have something going there, too. But I did like where I'm at. Ooh, Aklazoth's Deepest Betrayal. This card's not bad. Three black, black, four, four, flying lifelink. And when it attack, they discard a card and you sometimes make a bat. Sometimes you draw a card and it dies into a swamp and then maybe comes back. So it's all kind of cool. There's also Mindstone, which is actually looking decent here. Passing up on Baleful Strix, Life Death, Cryptic Commands. I don't really like all that. I could also take Touch the Spirit Realm, which can... I have the Savannah, you know. There's also Cosmic Rebirth, but this isn't that good with all these four drops. I think I'll just take Mindstone. Mindstone can help me get to four. That's not bad. Okay, Prismatic Ending is pretty good. Passing a late Icar Wellspring. I do like that card. I don't think I need another Nissa. That's another five drop. I kind of want to just take Prismatic Ending. There's also Scavenger Ooze, but Scavenging Ooze, but I really haven't found that card that impressive. I think Prismatic Ending's pretty good. Ooh. I like Raging Ravine and I like Elite Spellbinder. Mmm. I'm kind of feeling like this White Splash is, is looking good. There's also Charming Scoundrel and Chandra, but definitely don't need another expensive card. And I don't think the Scoundrel is that good here. It's okay. This card usually makes the cut, but I think I'd rather just take Spellbinder here. Oh, now Get Lost is actually a pretty nice pickup, getting some nice interaction here. And take that over Anduril. Oof, Late Candelabra. There's also a Restless Cottage and a Fairy Mastermind and a Cauldra Complete. So no cards I'm going to take. What do I at least want to pass? I kind of feel like Fairy Mastermind is the best card here. I think Cauldra Complete is, is only good if you get Stoneforge, so maybe I should have taken it. I don't know. Sure, I'll, I'll pick up an Elvish Reclaimer in case I end up wanting to get a strip mine action going here though right now it's probably not that likely i could have also hated concealed courtyard but those both seem somewhat marginal Ooh, blade splicer came back that's nice all right take that over wall of omens lark and goblin guide oh i guess those are the two cards i talked about there were two cards coming back i don't know why i thought there was one. Oh, last pick cosmic rebirth well yeah, that actually could make the cut here now that i have blade splicer and elven uh and elite spellbinder getting to spend three mana to put those directly into play and gain three life is just not that bad so all right, we got a decent pack one. Really, really could use some good acceleration. Obviously, like a Mox would be crazy or Soul Ring or Mana Crypt. This is a very assertive deck. This is a really good Mana Crypt deck, actually. And other than that, some more duels. I passed up Raging Ravine, but I feel like it was worth it. And all I have right now is Savannah. But I also don't have to play Chandra. I could be I could be Green White Splash Minskin Boo. I think I'll still play this card, but... I just picked up a ton of white cards. White seems really open this direction. So I'm pretty it's pretty nice too because Dan passed me all that white card, all those white cards really late. Um opening Urza and Lion's Eye Diamond. A real tragedy here. It's okay. I'll just take a scalding tarn. I, I like exploration too, but a red fetch is I think gonna be pretty useful to me. I'm passing a bribery and an Urza in the same pack. Dan can take whichever one he wants most, I guess. Not an exciting first pick, but you know, it is the the hand I'm dealt. But yeah, Dan, I don't think is expecting me to play these white cards that often. And they all came back really late, which means I didn't take any of them the first time. There's three white cards in the pack. It kind of makes it look like maybe I'm not drafting white. We'll see what this looks like. I don't like passing Urza Lion's Eye Diamond. Or Bribery for that matter. Though actually, Bribery is really bad against me because all my good cards are Planeswalkers. Will Exploration come back? Probably not. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's possible, but I don't think super likely. And this pack should be decent. I would imagine green is going to be pretty open this direction. But we'll find out. What do we got here? Well, balance is not a card I can really take. Though, I guess I have a bunch of planeswalkers. It's good with planeswalkers, but it's bad with creatures, and I have a decent amount of those. I think I'm just going to take Flooded Strand... I think I'm more likely to want Flooded Strand than Marsh Flats. They both get Savannah, which is nice. But now that I have Scalding Tarn and Flooded Strand, I could easily splash blue too, which is cool. And pass up on Generous Ent, Balance, Dryad. Yeah, that's fine. We'll just take another fetch land. Nothing wrong with that. 
Fetch lands aren't the worst with Cosmic Rebirth. Three mana, put a land into play, gain three life. Not the worst. Can accelerate you to five if you need it. Yeah, I mean, I guess I have Karyotid and Get Lost, or sorry, Mindstone, and then I have Prismatic Ending and Get Lost as pretty decent removal spells. And with a good set of uh, threats. Oh, there's a Dark Depths. I could take Depths and try to wheel stage. My concern with that is Slacks is passing to me and Jesse doesn't miss much, so I, I feel like, let's see, let's say I take Depths. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards, plus a Blooming Marsh, a Vortex, a Wormcle, and a Courser. But like actual seven appealing cards. So what's my option? Let's say I don't take the Depths or Stage, right? Like I take a different card. I don't think I want to escape to the Wilds. I guess I could take Palantir. Three mana, draws extra cards every turn. I have like a decent curve for it. Yeah, I have an Elvish Reclaimer. I'm going to take the Depths, and I'm going to try to wheel the stage. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I'm not giving up a massive win. Oh, wow. I hate passing Atroxa. Poof. But what else am I going to take? There's Goldspan Dragon. I just don't really need that. There's Necromancy also. There's Mana Leak, which I have Flooded Strand and Scalding Tarn. I could easily put Mana Leak into my deck, and maybe even Fairy Mastermind if I wanted it. There's Volcanic Island, which would make... Scalding Tarn the same, it'd make Flooded Strand into red mana. I mean, I guess that's fine. There's also just taking Atroxa and not stressing about it. I'm just going to take the Mana Leak. Mana Leak is just such a good card. Uh, now there's a Verdant Catacomb. There's also an Atali. Wow, there's just a lot of really powerful big cards coming around. Mm. There's Days, there's Tireless Tracker, Sylvan Library. You know what? I'm just going to take the Verdant Catacombs, and now I'm just going to play the cards I want to play. I don't know that it means a double red card like Chandra, but I feel like I have... Some pretty good fixing now with three fetch lands. So this is white, blue, green. This is currently just blue, red, and this is currently just, well, green, black, white. But having three fetch lands means that something like Ren and Six would be really good if I see it. It means I can play cards of all, all sorts of colors. And this pack is just really strong. Every single card in this pack is good. So one of them is just going to come back. Okay. Now we could take Bayou. Bayou would make... Oh, wow. It actually doesn't change any of the, the fetches. Well, that makes it a little less appealing. There's Golos. Golos in just the five-color deck. In with Depths. Yeah, I actually don't care. I don't mind that. There's Passing Up on a Fallen Shinobi. Questing Druid maybe comes back. I like that card. Uh, oh, there's Ren and Six. I like Leovold too, but I have no draw sevens. And Ren and Six with Wasteland plus three fetch lands is perfect. So definitely happy to pick that up. Huh. I need duels, but this is another of the same duel. It's still probably fine. I'll just take another white green land. It's okay. But it is funny that I don't want that duel so much. I kind of think the Elvish Reclaimer is going to make it, and I really hope this Thespian stage wheels. I'm worried it won't, but I feel like it was worth the risk there. If it doesn't, it doesn't. One of the reasons I like taking Mana Leak in this spot is decks like this, I even picked up the Golos afterwards, have a good 4-5 drop curve it you, they usually just need lower curve uh interaction oh good restless vine stock did wheel okay exploration did not but that's okay we'll take the vine stock and come on slacks you can pass a thespian stage you really can it's okay if, if thespian stage doesn't wheel maybe we'll get back uh and that wasn't this pack yet either uh maybe we'll get back escape the wilds do i want dry it of the elysian grove so dry to the elysian grove ramps me to five Oh, it also makes things like Dark Depths tap for mana. Is that a Generous Ent, which can currently cycle for white-green, but can probably end up cycling for more? Hmm. I kind of like Dryad. I think Dryad sounds kind of good in this deck. I have two fives that are good. I'm playing all the colors. Stage Wield, nice. Okay, perfect, perfect. So Thespian Stage Wield. Troll's still there, too. Wild. So is Damnation. So I guess people... Huh. They took some of the cards I didn't think were going to be taken, but I'm not complaining. Okay, so I've got Stage Depths in. Do I want Winter Orb? It's, Winter Orb actually seems like really bad. Like I could hate the Winter Orb. I could also take Might Stone and Weak Stone. I'm not going to play that. I could take Bonfire. Maybe I'll play Bonfire. Yeah, this deck could easily play Bonfire. Let's just take it. Ooh, Tracker, Crater Hoof, and Witness All Wield. Great sign for me, but I'm going to take Tracker. This looks like a great Tracker deck with all these fetches and Dryad it to play extra lands. And I guess I'll take Ephemerate, well, do 
I want to pass a thirst. I, I, I don't care about passing thirst. Oh, Rafelos actually could make it into this deck. Okay, so we're, we're playing lands now. I like that. Let's see what we can get here. Um, where are the good cards? That's what I want to know. So now there's Noble Hierarch versus Remand, and I kind of think I just take Remand here. This would be a fine Noble deck, but Noble or Elvish Mystic, one of those might wheel. I mean, obviously the Mystic would get taken after the Noble. There's also like Brainstorm, Sacred Foundry, Thraven. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I wouldn't mind, but Remand is really important. I could go for some duels. I know Tropical Island's gone, but a blue-white duel. So a blue-white duel makes Tarn into white. It doesn't affect Verdant. There's also a True Name Nemesis, which is just a really good card. There's Leyland Binding, which I kind of hope to wheel. There's Jetmir's Garden, which is okay, but yeah, it's pretty solid. Do I, I don't really like passing True Name Nemesis to Slacks here. That card is pretty good, but I don't feel like I'm that likely to get to play it. I would like to wheel Questing Beast or Leyland Binding, and I'm just deciding, do I take Tundra? Or do I take Jetmir's Garden? Jetmir's Garden would make Verdant, it'd make Tarn into green and Verdant into red. Whereas Flooded Strand just make or uh, Tudra just makes Tarn into white. Yeah, I think I'll just take the untapped land instead of the tapped land. Oh, I'm just gonna take Parallax Wave now. That card's great, and I don't mind passing up a, on a scrub land. I'm not I don't even have black cards in my deck. Though I would maybe play it for prismatic ending, but yeah, I think Parallax Wave over Grist, I think. I like Grist, but I like having a big effect in Parallax Wave. So let's just take that and still could use another duel or two. This pack has a Retrofitter, which I'm sad to pass. Teferi Hero of Dominaria, which is another nice five. Or Fertile Ground. Uh, I like Teferi, I think. I've got a couple Accelerants already, and Teferi is very strong. Over, yeah, some other decent cards. Oh, Palace Jailer? All right, I guess I'll take that. Maybe this Ephemerate will get played. Sad passing up two Triomes, and let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I don't think I'm getting a Triome back, but I think Palace Jailer's too good to pass up. And now we have Green Suns that gets Reclaimer, Rafalos, Karyatid, Dryad, Tracker. Uh, that's not that exciting to me, honestly. I could take a Red Blue Talisman. That might be... A little more my speed, though I, I guess I, I'm playing all these four colors for sure. I could also, this is pick six. I could also take Green Suns, but without even a one-drop Accelerant, I'm really not that into the Green Suns. There's also Lingering Souls, but I don't think I want that. Let's just take the Talisman here. I think Talisman will be solid. And taking these out, I am at 19 lands right now, so I need a couple more playables. There's also like Haywire Might, I guess, was a fine card. I don't know, with these two blue counters, having Talisman to go turn three Talisman, leave up Remand, Mana Leak, seems pretty good. I do like that I've staged depths. I would like a uh, crop rotation, if I could see that. I don't think we've seen that go by. I'm not going to get strip mine at this point, of course. Another duel would be good. A red-green duel would be really nice. I guess that was the Jetmere's Garden, but I like the untapped land with Tundra. I already have <laughs> Restless Vinestalk as a tapped land, and... I think that, oh wow. Whoa, Solitude and Seasoned Engineer. Am I the only white drafter? I think I just take Solitude because I have Ephemerate. Now I can just play Ephemerate. I have Palace Jailer. I mean, Solitude is just such a messed up card. They're, they're both really good though. Um, I'm going to take the Solitude, I think. I think that's just going to end up being better. I don't know. It's close. Mother's Channel. Okay. Uh, I think still I just take a Braid. Braid's a fine card. Pass a Dark Ritual, I guess. Inferno Titan and Kiki you can't do much with. I don't think I want Hydroid Crisis. I think a Braid's fine. Wow. Solitude and Seasoned Engineer. I have enough white cards to support Solitude, and it's just... I've found Solitude to just be incredible. This Rafelos I'm not the super biggest fan of. Because my deck, I think, might end up being a little look a little different. Oh, it says Recruiter and Thraven Inspector. I think Recruiter to get Solitude or Tracker or Palace Jailer or Blade Splicer, that's got to be better. All right. I don't think I'm getting any duels. If it's just Jetmere's Garden wheels, it would be really nice. But I don't know how likely that is. It did not. Leyline Binding did, which I think is going to be better than Gargaroth or Consider. 
So now I need to cut some cards, um, but that's fine. And here, I'm not gonna play any of these cards. I guess I'll hate the Triskelion in case Jesse's playing Misha's Workshop or something. And I don't think I want Imperial Recruiter. Steel Seraph is just okay. I guess I could just take Elspeth here, though I don't think I'm that likely to want to play it. Yeah, nothing good wield. I'll take Augur, but I'm probably not going to play that either. <laughs> Ooh, Heliod plus Triskelion, infinite combo. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, last pick Spell Cooler. I might actually play that one. Okay. Well, let's take a look and see how this deck looks. It's it's okay. It didn't open anything particularly great, but we've got some good stuff going on. All right, time for round one. Ended up having to cut, like, I don't know, a Braid, Nyssa, Raffellos, Spell Queller, and Mindstone, but ended up with a decent deck. I think this deck's not that good, but we'll see how we do. We're playing against Dan here, and... Yeah, I will keep this hand. This hand has... An early play in Prismatic Ending and Wasteland, and then a Teferi if I get to that point. I guess that's fine. Probably lead on Plains Go. Well, I guess the downside of leading on Plains Go, I just lead on Scalding Tarn, is that if I draw a Red and Six, I want to be able to play it. Um, I guess leading on Tarn also makes it so I'm not doing that. Well, I'm going to Prismatic Ending that thing. Nan's going to get a use out of it, but hopefully it's not too bad. Talisman? Nothing else, please? Well, maybe maybe I get Dan by uh, killing the Mana Crypt and making Stranding the Demonic Tutored card in hand. I guess we'll find out. Prismatic ending that, pass the turn. And I can also Wasteland here, which I will certainly be doing. All right, action. Oh, Remand is actually a pretty nice little draw there. Remand, whatever Dan's first play is, and then that'll maybe bridge the gap to Teferi here. Cycling a generous Ent, sure. Still don't know what Dan tutored for, of course, but we will find out probably in the not-too-distant future. Killing Mana Crypt and Ketria Triumph could have really stranded something in Dan's hand. That would be awesome if so. Let's see. What they got. All right, nothing, that's fine. I'll just take my turn. Oh, well, there's Renin Six. All right, let's build towards that. But I wanna leave Remand up here, so I think I'll just wait. Corpse Dance the Generous Ent, okay. You get a food token and hit me for five. Um, sure. I don't really know about all that. I'm not sure exactly what that play is trying to accomplish besides dealing five and getting a food token. Talisman, sure. And a tapped overgrown tomb, okay. Very odd. Um, let's crack this for Tundra here. I think I'll just get Tundra. I have the Wasteland anyway. Play Ren and Six. Plus one. Oh, I guess I'm actually just getting Wasteland back anyway, so let's just uh, <laughs> pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> All right, you get to crack that. It's fine. We're going to go Remand, and then maybe t I could go Teferi plus one and then untap the Wasteland and cast Wasteland, which is pretty nice. A sneak attack. No, I don't think I want to face that quite yet. Ooh, Ephemerate? Okay. All right, let's see what we draw here. Oh, Elite Spellbinder, so good. Okay, let's go Elite Spellbinder here and see what you got. Oh, Fire Covenant, Torsten, and Sneak. Well, let's just put Torsten in the Exile Zone. Play Wasteland. Wasteland the Overgrown Tomb, plus one. I'm just going to get back Wasteland. And then pass the turn, and if... You go to Fire Covenant, the Elite Spellbinder, I can uh, Ephemerate it, and I can get lost to the Sneak Attack, which Dan might just throw into play. Elite Spellbinder is a really good draw. It really messed up that sequence. Okay. Um, do I want to Ephemerate in response? I kind of do. 
feels like this is probably worth doing. All right, take Fire Covenant, and then we'll come back for Persist as well. Obviously, it doesn't like fully deal with these cards, but it does make them a lot more awkward to cast. So I think it's worth doing that. Draw. Let's go play Wasteland, play Teferi. Oop. Oh, this is working out so perfectly. Plus one Teferi draw, plus one Renin six on Scalding Tarn. And then end of turn, I'm going to untap these two lands and then get lost the sneak attack. Give Dan some map tokens that currently isn't very close to using. One card in hand can fire Covenant, but I only have one creature in play, so it's not that big of a deal. And Torsten is very far from being cast. Unclear if Dan even has white white mana in deck. All right. Shieldred Edict. Each opponent sacrifices a Planeswalker. Uh, I'll sack red and six. That's funny. <laughs> Didn't have the... Shieldred's Edict, when you don't usually have a choice. Let's just keep plus one to Teferi. Oh, okay. I kind of want to cast all my cards. And I don't have a Wasteland target over there, so I guess I can. Land... Recruiter of the Guard. And let's pick up Solitude, probably. Let's see. Tireless Tracker, Palace Jailer, Solitude. Mm, actually, let's just go Tireless Tracker, land, Elvish Reclaimer. Remember, I have a dry it out, so it didn't really matter what order I sequence my lands in. Send. And then untap these two lands. And now I can go Tracker, get two clues, and with Dryad and Teferi drawing me extra cards, I should be able to draw into pretty much whatever I need. Plus, I have Elvish Reclaimer there ready to go start assembling stage depths. So Dan does not have a lot of time, and you can cast a Fire Covenant here and take a bunch of damage, and then I'll go Tireless Tracker, get a, get a clue, get another clue, and I think I'm fine with all that. All right, boom. Take, take a bunch of damage. Pass the turn draw tireless tracker tarn go get my island yeah i only have one target left draw to fairy crack a clue and so wait hold on let's go talisman sylvan caryatid and then Pass the turn, on top of those two lands, and I can crock a clue end of turn as well. And next turn, Tireless Tracker is going to attack for kind of a lot of damage. Okay. Knight's Whisper. Fair. Put you to eight. Next turn, Tracker is attacking for six. Okay, okay, that's pretty good. Do this. All right. This has got their swamp. Let's go crack a clue. End of turn. Cosmic Rebirth. Huh. Let's draw with Teferi first. Parallax Wave is probably a good one to have in play. I'm trying to think if I, if I can do anything with Cosmic Rebirth. Tireless Tracker is hitting for six, so I can't quite win by just getting a Ren and Six and pinging for one. I think what I'm going to do is play Savannah, make a clue, draw with the clue. Okay, and then I'm just going to play Parallax Wave, attack for six, and then just pass with a bunch of good stuff in hand. So I'm going to untap with Teferi. And now I've got Leyline Binding, Parallax Wave, and Cosmic Rebirth up. Like I can Cosmic Rebirth, Elite Spellbinder in response to something. Um, Parallax Wave can stop. Like it's not like I'm going to get Sneak Emrakul or anything like that. And Leyline Binding is just like another another piece of backup. So let's uh, get, get the screenshot ready. <laughs> uh, I guess I don't need to show 50 million Fire Covenants. All right, Mana Confluence and Concede. Nope, what are, what are we casting? Do we have to move all these windows again? Come on, Persist on Troll of Khazad Doom, sure. That's fine with me. I guess Sneak is also shown there. And then Map Token the Troll, sure. 
Reveal ponder. Okay. Wow. It's an aggressive ponder. <laughs> I like me a splash ponder as much as anyone else, but I guess we see mana confluence and talisman and Ketria Triumph, sure. All right, pass the turn. I mean, I just didn't need to cast anything here, I don't think. I guess I could Cosmic Rebirth. I don't really need to do any of these things. Let's draw the Parallax Wave ticks down. Uh, minus eight, the emblem. Play uh, Temple Garden, get a clue. Crack the clue, <laughs> exile the troll. All right, that's what I thought. I wasn't gonna show any new cards either. All right, so this is Game one here against Dan. And sideboarding. Yeah, I don't see anything that I really want. This deck doesn't have the, the most robust sideboard in the world. So I think this works out. I mean, I guess I could put in a braid. I saw a lot of talismans. The problem is I don't have that many red sources. I really was missing another duel, and the Tundra was good. Jetmir's Garden also would have been fine, like the you know. But it's not like I had a wealth of duels that I passed up on. So the fact that my Verdant and Flooded Strand don't get red is a little annoying. I guess I could have taken Volcanic Island, but I'm really glad I have the Mana Leak. Mana Leak and Remand against the Sneak Deck are really good. I also like the removal. Get Lost, Leyline Binding, Parallax Wave. I have a lot of good. Like exile removal or enchantment removal. Um, let's see. Sure. Turn three, Minsk and Boo. About as good as this deck's gonna do. Um, if that's good enough, then that's good enough. Probably lose to Mana Crypt this time. I think what happened is Dan went, I mean, well, we saw Dan go land, land, man, Mana Crypt, Talisman, DT. And over the next couple turns, based on what happened, and then the Elite Spellbinder. I'm pretty sure Dan DT to set up Sneak Torsten, whichever, whichever PC was missing. But Prismatic ending on the Mana Crypt, man, he couldn't cast Sneak for a while, plus the Wasteland. And then Elite Spellbinder took the Torsten after remanding the Sneak, and then the Sneak got blown up, and did a pretty good job of dismantling all the stuff Dan played. So that was nice. This hand is going to lose badly to Mana Crypt, though. I can give you that guarantee. Uh, and I have all my colors. I have white, green, blue, red. And so, which is, this deck's not playing any black cards, so Tarn for a basic mountain, and I'm basically set at this point. I even have Talisman here. But we'll see if Dan keeps the hand. Looks like Dan did keep seven, but who knows, maybe it was a sketchy seven. No Mana Crypt, please. No Mana Crypt. All right, let's go Bindstock. Oh, no. Okay, Troll's fine. Troll or uh, Generous Ent is fine. Uh, Vampiric Tutor would not be fine. That would that would be pretty problematic. All right, got an Overgrown Tomb. So still is Overgrown Tomb in hand. Exhum the Troll. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, just play Talisman here. Pass. Troll does pretty good against uh, against Minsk and Boo, unfortunately. All right, get hit and hopefully no plays. But he played an untapped land, so that's less likely. All right, well, Wasteland doesn't do much. Minsk and Boo doesn't do much. What I think I'm going to do here is play Blade Splicer and Elvish Reclaimer. Fire Covenant's going to get me if, if that is what's coming. But there's not much I can do about that. I think I might triple block if, uh, if Dan lets me. I mean... This is feeling like an end-of-turn Fire Covenant, and if that's the case, that's the case. But I think it's worth trying for the triple block, if not. I, I don't think I'm going to beat Fire Covenant as, like, I can't just not play my creatures. It's all my, my hand is all creatures. And playing Minsk and Boo and making a 4-4 then not having it immediately killed by the troll, it's not ideal, but it could happen. Oh, hi, dog. Good, good girl. Oh, so it didn't get end-of-turn covenanted. From what I've seen, triple blocking isn't that big of a risk because the only removal spell I've seen is the Fire Covenant, which means that a triple block would still decide to lose all my creatures anyway. Can't block now. I got Fire Bolted. Okay. Can I just draw Leyline Binding or Parallax Wave or Jailer or Solitude? Any of the million cards? No? No? Anyone? Bueller? 
This needs three lands in the graveyard. Julie, can we chill out? Yeah. <laughs> Let's it. What if I just go Minsk and Boo? Jules, chill, chill. Unbelievable dog. So I can go Dryad. The problem is if I go Dryad Karyatid, I can't activate Reclaimer. Ridiculous dog. I could go Dryad, land, land, go. Offer the triple block, and then this is with 3-4. It doesn't actually... All right, let's 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 do that, because the Elvish Reclaimer will get up to a 3-4 here. And this also lets me start the look for um, depth stage. So let's just pass. I kind of feel like if Dan had... Fire Covenant would have fired it off, as it were. And now he could flashback Firebolt on the Reclaimer, but then I can crack Tarn, crack Wasteland, and sack it. Shielder's Edict. I sack a non-token creature. Oh. Ooh. Um. I think. Hmm. Actually, think I sack Tarn now. I guess I'll sack the wasteland. I'm gonna get Thespian Stage. And then I think I sack the Reclaimer here. I don't think I'm gonna have time to do it again. I could also have cracked Tarn and sacked the Wasteland, but then I have to Wasteland one of my own lands or Wasteland itself, which doesn't seem good. I guess I just die to fi land Firebolt now, actually. All right. Um yeah, I mean, I have, I had what, one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six. I had, I had a lot of answers to that, to the troll, so that was unfortunate, but that is what, uh, the turn two troll on the play is a pretty fast clock. It, it pretty much did the job. Well, not all is going to work out. <laughs> Let's see if we can get game three here. I think we have a pretty good set of removal for what Dan's got going on, but... All right, I am on the play. Um, oh man. Yeah, this hand's so good if I had any other land, because I'd have Remand, Spellbinder, Jailer, but I think I just have to mulligan. Okie dokie. <laughs> I'll keep this hand and I think put back planes and lead on forest go. I kind of want to wait to crack the strand until I have a tireless tracker in play if I can swing that. All right, land go. I really hope I don't get shielders edicted here. Uh, stage into karyatid. I mean, if I do, I guess I can just play a tracker next turn, but if I can just get Ren and six into play with flooded strand, then I'll feel pretty good. All right, it's gonna be another turn two troll game. Maybe, maybe overgrown tomb. All right, no shield dreads edict. All right, well, exhumes also annoying, but like I said, I have a million answers to exhume here, so let's just hope I can find one of them. There's Tarn. I guess I'm just gonna go tireless tracker now that I have guaranteed. Uh, Let's go Flooded Strand, sure. Now that I have guaranteed Ren and Sex, even if the carry to dies, let's just get the tracker out. Mm -hmm. All right. I will take six because I don't have a choice. And I do get to draw a decent amount of cards here. Wow, Ruby and Mana Crypt, huh? What is this? Seeding song? Uh-oh. I don't like this. Whatever this is is bad. Oh. Eh, all right. That's okay, I guess. <laughs> Crack this. Get Temple Garden. All right. Can I just draw Dark Depths? That'd make things really easy. Or Solitude. Solitude would be great. Oh, Parallax Wave. Yes. All right. Let's do this. Um... I could crack Tarn for Tundra here. Yeah, I guess it's probably fine to do that. And then go, then 
tracker goes up and then I go parallax wave hit the end hit the troll I'm just gonna do that anyway so I think I might as well do it now hit with the tracker and that was a lot of Dan's resources and now I have these clues ready to go let's just uh, and hopefully I don't have to use waves so these can just be locked under there for enough turns that I can find solitude or palace jailer Are we just gonna kill my tireless tracker right now? I guess I could ephemerate it. Hmm. I could also parallax wave it. My concern with parallax waving the tireless tracker is I don't want these things to come back. So if Dan tries to kill my tireless track right now, I'm just gonna use ephemerate. So I will see. Let's see. Yeah, this looks like fire covenant. Two damage to tireless tracker. Let's just ephemerate. And I guess on upkeep, I'm not going to cast ephemerate because I, I want the tracker to be able to attack. All right, and you're out of stuff. All right, this feels like a very winnable game now. All right, no, fade, crack a clue. I guess we'll do it like this. Oh, leyline binding is great. All right, land. Crack, crack. Actually, you know what? Instead of cracking a clue, I'm just going to play Ren and Six and get back Scald and Tarn and attack. Actually, I will crack the clue. I don't need to leave up Leyline Binding right now. I think it's worth getting Ren and Six out, but I think just trying to kill Dan with Tireless Tracker here makes sense. Actually, no, I don't have quite a. Can I actually win next turn? Two, three. Oh, I'm one mana short <laughs> of cracking a bunch of clues and then and then pinging with Ren and Six. Okay, well, let's still crack some clues here. Now I probably, if I can, want to leave up uh, Leyline Binding. Actually, Le Leyline Binding is actually now one mana because of the Dryad, which is nice. And I think I just play Reclaimer. I'm gonna run in six to, I think we'll just ping here and then attack. Might as well make it so like mana, oh, I guess he had the food anyway, so I wasn't winning this turn regardless. And then pass with uh, Leyline Binding up, the Parallax Wave still good for another turn. And then I've got a Lethal Tireless Tracker plus Dryad plus Elvish Reclaimer to get uh, the other half of the depths combo if the game does somehow last a little bit longer. So I feel like got this pretty well taken care of. Parallax Wave remains undefeated. Tried to cheese me out with land cyclers. Not on my watch. <laughs> and then I have Leyline Binding as backup. I do think my the white based exile removal is actually great against reanimate sneak attack type decks. Like, Leyline Binding can beat Sneak Emrakul, you know? They just sneak in an Emrakul and you binding it before it attacks. It's fantastic. So, I like the way this looks. And I am pretty sure that we're going to win next turn. In fact, we did. All right, we got round one. All right, time for round two. I would like to play first and... Ugh, I think we can do better than that. Hand doesn't do anything. This hand I like... Um, Connor is on black green, black jund actually. Uh, I will keep this hand. Uh, what do I put back? I guess it's just Teferi. I will probably have to pitch one of these other white cards to Solitude, but I can't put back Thespian Stage, Solitude, or Ephemerate, so I think I'll just put back Teferi. Wouldn't mind drawing Adepts here. Oh, Tracker's actually not terrible. Once I get to three lands, I can start using Tracker for some value. All right, play more creatures. I just want creatures. Oh, that's all you have? I don't think I want to... Oh, I will fire off a Get Lost. That, that I will do. I just don't think I want to use Solitude Ephemerate to kill a Noble Hierarch or Ignoble Hierarch. And Get Lost has been pretty sick. If you miss on lands here... Why, why do they get to draw their land and I don't get to draw mine? Oh, and they have a cheap creature to use the map tokens on? It's actually pretty annoying. Oh, we didn't use the map tokens? No, you got to use a map token now. All right. I revealed Custodial Lich. That's fine. 
get to mill it at least. He didn't get another land out of the deal. Okay, I guess that's how this game's gonna go. Pass again. Let's see if Connor hits lands here off map tokens. All right, here we go. Reveal mountain. So you hit another land, but it was a mountain. All right, I will take it. Suppose Zeotor's proven ground. All right. All right, there's a forest. Let's go elite spellbinder here. I also like to, if I can, save tracker to play after. Uh, to play right before I hit a land drop because of this exact reason. It's about to get bolted or dismembered, I guess, in this case. Dragon's Rage Channeler. So we have instance creatures and maybe something else. Maybe not. Has a mountain. Oh, Fury's on the... Getting tossed. All right. What do we got? Oh, I see. We have Char, Grist, Questing Druid, Rex Sage. I'm going to certainly take Undermount Adventure here. Though it's going to be hard to really beat any of these in cards. So let's see. Stone Lich, Mountain, Mountain, Char. Oh, still, there's still Char in there. Whatever. Questing Beast was the draw. Okay. Mm. Draw Blades place here. Oh, man, I really need to find a land here. Rex Sage will just kill my Blade Splicer token. I could go Solitude Ephemerate here, kill both those. Yeah, I guess that's what I do now. Um, let's actually pitch the Blade Splicer. Get Solitude in here. Target the Questing Beast, Ephemerate the Solitude. Target the Dragon's Rage Channeler and pass the turn. Not an ideal scenario, but if I draw red next turn and just get to play Minsk and Boo, that wouldn't be too bad. I cast Questing Druid here and hope to hit some stuff, I guess. Or you're just going to play Forest, play Grist, make a token, mill a Restless Cottage, and pass. All right. Red Land. Oh, I could Solitude. No, I don't think it's good to do that. I could just attack Grist and I'll still get to kill the token. And I'll get to I'll get to gain three life instead of them gaining a life. I still think this is better. Yep. And let's just play Sylvan Karyatid because then that opens the door for Minsk and Boo next turn. Obviously, it would be much better to draw it this turn, but better late than never. All right. Seek the Beast, Exiling, Dire Fleet, Daredevil, Mind Collapse. Eh, all right. Yeah, we got a Rex Sage over there. That's fine. Can kill my uh, Solitude if you really want. Goldspan Dragon into Mind Collapse. My Solitude. Don't love that. Or you could Grist it, I guess. You could play Questing Druid and then Grist it. I mean, I have Parallax Wave, but. Oh, Dire Fleet, Daredevil, that. Okay. Sure. And then mine collapse. Yep. Well, I could play Minsk and Boo here. I don't know how much that would do. Could play Parallax Wave. I guess that's probably what I got to do here. It's not ideal, and I'm not going to win this game, but Parallax Wave, getting the dragon. Oh, I guess he's even got Rex Sage. Yeah, I can't, I can't really win this game. Just too far behind. Don't have anything to do. Uh, do I want a braid? Not really. All these cards look pretty good to me. I mean, I guess I could play Vorinclex, but if I just want like another big green thing or Nissa, I don't really though. I feel like I feel like I have a pretty good setup. Like Ephemerate, Palace Jailer, Parallax Wave, Solitude, Leyline Binding, all seem very good in this matchup as well. So I think as long as I don't have you know two lands and play on turn six or whatever. Uh, I've got a decent shot of winning that, so we'll see how that ends up going. Let's see what they've got. Looks like my teammates are not doing great, so we'll see. On the other hand, Ely Cassis, I forgot to show you decks this time, but uh, Ely Cassis has a... I can actually show you because I had it built here. Uh, Ely's Luris deck is, is absurd. He's got uh, a Luris deck that has... 
Ancestral Sol Ring and Mox Emerald. So this is what we're playing with. Ancestral Recall, Sol Ring, Mox Emerald. Ely is currently up uh, around. I actually had to play his round one for him because he had uh, uh, something come up. And, in, you know, he'll be back in an hour. So I, I played round one. That's why I have the deck built. And I, I won round one <laughs> with this. This deck is sick. All right. Well, let's get back to the non-sick deck. That'd be my deck. Play first. Okay. I mean, I'll keep this hand. No red mana yet, but... It's going to be pretty hard to turn down a turn two remand on the play. I have all my other three colors and I have Golos on five. So if I just draw a red source, Sylvan Karyatid, I don't know, any of those things seems like it could go pretty well. Being stuck on land all game last game did not. All right, Dig Noble's a pretty good draw. Wouldn't mind a prismatic ending. All right, Wasteland's also not terrible. At some point, that'll be good here. I need to draw something off this remand, though. All right, well, this works fine. Okay, well, there's stage, so at some point we'll get depths, hopefully. I mean, the Golos can go get it, which is nice. So you didn't have a three drop last turn, so you played that. I mean, we'll see if you've got something to play. It kind of makes sense that you don't. Leaving Ignoble up, I don't know, scared maybe of attacks. Not sure, I'll play the Thespian stage here. I don't really want to tap out for Tireless Tracker and have it just die to removal. Seek the Beast, sure. All right, what do we exile? Goldspan, Dragon, Fable. Okay, so you only get Goldspan, or the Goldspan is going to get exiled, and I'm going to remand the Fable. Oh, I guess you get to play the Goldspan. Mox, too, huh? Everyone else has these Mox things. I should look into getting some of those. Well, whichever red card gets played this turn, I'm going to remand it. Yeah, I guess it's, it's Fable in this particular case. Remand your fable. Gold span's gone. All right. Nice. I've heard catacombs that can't get red. <laughs> That's okay. We get to go tireless tracker here into verdant, which is going to get a tapped temple garden. And pass the turn. Well, we're not going to maybe use Minsk and Boo because my next play is going to be. Uh oh. What is this? Oh, Custodial Lich, sure. I'm just going to Golos into Dark Depths and hope that that's good enough. Honestly, it might be. I mean, I'm hit, taking 4 down to 15. Golos can block next turn. Eh, a little late for you, Elite Spellbinder, I'm afraid. I can Spellbinder the turn after to make sure the way is clear. That's going to be nice. Uh, dark Depths. Pass the turn. Now you need a Flyer, which... Jund isn't really known for its exile removal or its flyers, so maybe this works. Uh oh, is this a, oh, this is a dismember? So I'm going to take eight this turn at the minimum, probably more. You play Fable to get another counter here. But then next turn, um, next turn, if I draw red, I can just win. <laughs> All right, I need to draw red now because I can just Minsk and Boo minus two to throw Dark Depths. Oh, that would be sweet. I'm taking nine now? Yeah, this questing druid has gone pretty hard this game. Yeah, I get to tap those. Oh no, I'm one short. Oh, I need to draw a black lotus. It is not my deck. It's in Jesse's deck, actually. Slacks has the lotus. All right, well, I'm gonna get to play a spellbinder and have a 2020 to block, so I don't know, I might end up getting there. Oh, a solitude, interesting. Huh. Let's see. Um, does that change anything? I think Spellbinder is still probably just about as good as playing Solitude, so I think I just play Spellbinder here. I, I feel like I'm going to lose. I mean, if you have a removal spell here for Spellbinder, I'm dead. Mind Collapse. Uh, yeah, I guess that's the downside of playing that instead of Solitude. But I feel like, huh? yeah, I mean, I guess I guess I could crack a clue. And if I draw a white card, no, I can't draw white in ephemera. All right. Yeah, maybe I should have just left up solitude, but it didn't feel like I was that likely to, to succeed either way. All right. One and one. Let's get on to round three, shall we? All righty. Time for a bonus round of content. We're going to get to watch a match. Me playing as Ely Cassis. And oh, yeah, look at this hand. 
This is why I wanted you to get this bonus content because uh, Ely's deck is sick. So it seems like no reason to, to let a, a sweet deck go to waste. Um, I'm going to play Turn on Saga because I have Soul Ring. This is a Luris deck, and uh, this deck is disgusting. If Jaybro doesn't kill the Saga on turn one or the Soul Ring on turn one, then I'm going to make a token on turn two and three. Draw. Oh, Mishra's Bobble? Don't mind if I do. Let's go Bobble. Let's just keep it in play for right now because it's going to pump my. Uh, or is a Saga tokens. And not only does Ely have the Soul Ring, it's also like I just showed you, it got Ancestral or Ancestral and Mox Emerald. So pretty good stuff. Let's make a construct. Draw. White source would be even ideal. Actually, I don't even really need a white source because I am gonna probably go get uh Mox Opal here. It's Mox Opal. Skull Clamp, he's even got a sick Urza Saga deck. So if I get a Mox Opal here, I can cast Vindicate. That sounds pretty good to me. Let's just get Mox Opal, play a land. I think I just Vindicate the Lotus Cobra because the Cobra could potentially tap for two mana next turn. So let's just, and then hit for five. And then next turn I get to go Deep Cavern Bat plus put Luris into my hand. And that seems like it's going to suffice, given that I have two 5-5s five in play. We'll see. Oh, Sylvan Library? That, <laughs> that is not going to get you out of this. Got to have something pretty good alongside of that. Well, Windswept Teeth. I'm glad I took the Cobra. Oh, Winter Orb. Oh, that's gross. Uh, let's play the Bat. Play the Bat first. This will, The Winter Orb will change my play for sure, but... I don't think J-Bro has much of a shot. All right, up a game there. And I actually think, I feel like I had one too, too many lands. So I think I'm gonna put in a staff, maybe a Witherbloom command. Yuli's got access to green mana through Spars Headquarters, Marsh Flats, Bayou, Opal, Emerald. That's a pretty good amount, plus currency converter in a pinch. So I think we'll run this. All right, I'll reveal Luris as my companion, and ah, this hand's good enough. I can get Spar's Headquarters or Bayou, depending on what I draw on my turn one. Obviously, if I just draw a blue land on turn one, it's ideal. I also have, under, actually, I think I have Underground Sea also. Isn't that the case? Um, let me just check Yuli's deck real quick. Oh, yeah, so never mind. This is really easy then. We get to go Marsh Flats, Underground Sea, Inquisition U, after J. Bro Mulligan, nonetheless. I missed. Inquisition sucks so much. Then again, J. Bro's hand is not fantastic. It's four land, Mystic Confluence, Cryptic Command, so he might not have any plays for a bit here. Copperline Gorge, all right. Draw. Okay, Ancestral myself. Okay, no land after Ancestral, huh? Discard Winter Orb and From the Catacombs, because From the Catacombs, I'll be able to flash back whenever it is I can cast it. I guess he's planning on cycling the Jetbeer's Garden. I mean, j -Bro's hand is really not very good, but if I don't draw lands, I'm just not going to win. Uh, sure, I'll play a Evolve Sleeper, I guess. Daze is going to be kind of nice here, but... <laughs> okay, Forest... Garrick Relentless. Yeah, I guess I have to daze that. But being on one land on turn four, I can't believe I, I ancestral and missed and then missed on my turn. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Soaring can help get me out of this, I suppose. That is a start. Let's play these things. Hey, where are mites in the deck to get with Saga to uh, make it so Mox Opal taps for more? And I've got enough green sources to sometimes use it. So it can be pretty good. J Bro still doesn't have blue. So we've got a chance here. All right, Urza Saga is good as well. Let's go land. And I think just Deep Cavern Bat on Mystic Confluence. Yeah, there's an Oliphant here as well. Oh, should I just take the Oliphant? I kind of feel like I should. He clearly doesn't have a land to cycle with, or he wouldn't have played that, unless he has Volcanic. How much do I care about Oliphant? I mean, it's kind of annoying. No, I'm going to take Mystic Confluence. 
I feel like I've got I've got a little I'm not that worried about Olafon. I can just make Urza Saga tokens. I get in for one. Pass. Okay, so we have cryptic command in hand. Because I assume Olafon's coming down here. Okay, didn't draw land. Land would still be good. Okay, land is nice, because now I can go Mesmeric Fiend, take your Cryptic Command. All you have in play is Exploration. Yeah, and then I can just hit for one in the air, make a Saga token into another Saga token. Okay, feeling pretty good about this now. Weird game. j -Bro mold to a really bad hand. <laughs> Drawing Taiga doesn't really help. He can attack for eight here with, if he wants to attack with Devoted Druid. Well, no, I guess he can't because then I just make a Saga token. I had one land in play on turn five or whatever, but Soul Ring really gets me back into it. If you attack with Devoted Druid, it's just really not going to work out well. All right. So let's make a token. Let's make another token. And what do we want to get? Let's just see what we draw. We drew a Swamp. Let's make another token. Kind of just want to get Skull Clamp here and just start going hard. Let's go... I don't think I need to Skull Clamp the Construct. Well, yeah, no, let's do it. Let's go Skull Clamp Construct. Attack for six in the seven total. If you block, then I get to draw off the Construct. And then on my turn, or in my post-combat rather, Ooh, Phantasmal Image. No, he has no cards in hand. Land, Skull Clamp, I, I think. I'm going to hit the Sleeper instead of the Haywire Might because of uh, the Construct token. And then I, I guess I will just cast Brainstorm this turn. It's probably fine instead of equipping Skull Clamp. At this point, Jaybro's down so many cards that it's going to be pretty tough for him to come back. I mean, I do have two Fiends in play, and you kill those, and you get all your cards back. That's a thing. Lorien Revealed, okay. Yeah, that's fine. You don't have a big window to play those cards because Turok is coming down next turn probably. Okay. Three mana Corsair. Top card is Hydroid Crisis. Oh, I don't like that. Uh, let's brainstorm. Put back two lands, whatever. Draw. Hmm. Now, my, now I wish I had this Winter Orb back. I think I want to play Turok this turn. And I could actually... Hold on, I don't have green... I was going to say, if I had green, I guess I don't have a forest in my deck. If I had green, I could make Jaybro Mill, but I don't have access to green. Mm, let's go Bobble. Yeah, I guess if I play Turok, that leaves me with two mana, so I could also Phantasmal Image. Do not want a Phantasmal Image a Construct? Let's see, next turn you're casting. You're not even casting the Crisis for that much, honestly. Yeah, let's go... Badlands, Turok with Kicker, Discard, Dak Fade and Pest Infestation. Yes, thank you very much. Phantasmal Image, Construct, and then Attack. Oh man, Deep Cavern Bat is so good. It's a very cool card. All right, so you draw Krasis and you're hoping with Exploration out and Corsair out to draw some more lands too. No land? Okay, that's a tap land at least. And it's not tap land. All right, so that was an ideal scenario for Jabra. <laughs> it's okay. And now we can cast Krasis for X equals six. Okay. So you draw three, draw Scavenging Ooze, Lee of Old, Sail into the West. Is your hand now. Okay, this is becoming a challenging game. I could put, I could use from the catacombs to put something into play. Um, do I have a way to get another artifact into play? I guess I don't right now. From the catacombs, getting back Oliphant, I mean, I guess is the, will eventually be the, the, the plan. I'm just deciding if I want to equip Skull Clamp on anything first. 
This is a 4-3, so if I make that a 5-4, it can still get blocked by Krasis. I don't really like that. I really don't want either of my fiends to, to die, so I think... I mean, maybe I, maybe I do let Turok equip Turok and attack. I think that's actually fine. And attack with these. Is there any way I can attack with anything else? What if I attack with everything? Hold on. You block Deep Cavern Bat to get Mystic Confluence. So you block one of those and one of those, and you take 11. Wait, hold on. You block one of those, you take 11. Oh, I'm, I'm like one short. Huh, interesting. Because let's say the Krasis blocks Construct, or Corsair blocks Construct, Krasis blocks Deep Cavern Bat. j takes 13, goes down to 1. So then if I find oh, Skull Clamp, my Mox Emerald, I just win. Let's say if I attack with these three, Krasis blocks Turok and takes 12, or you chump with Corsair. It's actually pretty close from the catacombs can't get anything that does something this instant oh i guess i could from the catacombs oh i could just from the catacombs back the deep cavern bat yeah that sounds fine and then and and just take the take the cryptic back and then let you have lee of old sail into the west or whatever oh we want cryptic back sure okay you're at one I guess I have the mana that I should, that I can equip Skull Clamp first. Because I can still flash back from the catacombs afterwards if I need to. And let's Skull Clamp the Haywire Might. Draw two, gain two. Blood Tithe Harvester and Scrapwork Mutt. No, those don't do any of those things. So let's go from the catacombs, Mesmeric Fiend here. And exile, marsh, marsh flat, marsh flats, inquisition, days. Oh, I guess. Uh, I was one short of lurising back, winter orb. But that is actually a play that I'm going to make at some point. Okay. Get you. I'm still going to get cryptic. Uh, my hand is. Oh, I, I had mox emerald as an out too. Yeah. Just get another swamp. Take cryptic command. Uh, actually, do you do I take cryptic or do I take scavenging ooze? Scavenging ooze also seems pretty annoying. Mm. Hmm. <clears throat> scavenging ooze. With this much mana. I'm gonna gain a life off windswept teeth. Yeah, maybe I just take the scavenging ooze and leave with cryptic. Yeah, I actually think that's fine, funnily enough. Uh, yeah, go ahead. This works fine for me. Draw windswept teeth. Spire bluff, sure. You can play that. Fertile ground, sure. Okay, you can attack with this courser to get the initiative. That's fine. Let's see. And Jibra now has a trop on top. Okay, okay. This is getting getting dicier. Hydroid Crisis is a pretty good job. And I guess we could start with Leovold here. From Sail from the West does not actually even do that much <laughs> at this point. I mean, it does something, but Jibro doesn't have tons of cards in deck. We'll see. Okay, here comes Leo. And probably just leave up Cryptic. And then on my turn, draw. Um, I guess I start by casting Scrapwork Mud. Oh, there's a Leo in play. I guess I should not discard a card. <laughs> let's, let's, uh, I do want the construct to be bigger, but yeah, let's not discard here. And it's a 4 3. Don't think I need to equip Skull Clamp. 
Okay, now you go cryptic. What are you gonna do? Tap all creatures your opponent's control, draw a card. Sure. Um, oh, I, I guess maybe I should have bobbled in response to, to Leo. Um, Cause I am gonna need to bobble here, even though it's gonna give you a card, that's fine. Draw Lotus Cobra. Because I want to take the initiative back. So, finale of devastation. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Plus, we know there's a thing in head, so ten. <sighs> Creatures you control gain plus X, plus X, and gain haste. Uh, well, I missed my thing to, chance to kill earlier, and certainly don't think I would have fared better if I uh, didn't didn't make that attack down to one, but I actually do lose here. Because I just get, we just get finaled for eight, nine, yeah, 10, then you have three lethal attackers. Damnation doesn't even get me out of it, right? One, two, three, four. Well, no, with exploration out, damnation really doesn't do it either. Though I guess maybe that's the play. How awkward. Hmm. Yeah. All right, we're going to have to go to game three here, I guess. I think that was game... Two. I'm, I'm, like, getting confused now. Yeah, that was game That was game two. We won game one of turn one saga. Soaring. Uh, yeah, I mean... I kind of want Armageddon in this matchup. So maybe I'll put in Geddon. I still kind of like the Witherbloom command. I mean, that game was mostly, like, it, it did actually come back to get me that I just didn't play a land for a million turns. It's unfortunate. Maybe I take the Haywire Might out. All right. We're on the play here. Let's see what we got. Any Soul Rings? Any Soul Rings? No, but this hand seems legit. It's just a solid hand. It... It doesn't have the right zero and, and it doesn't have the right zero mana artifact or the right blue mana instant, but you know it's it's okay. Uh, let's go bobble, bobble J bro. Seeing Rogan Triumph. Um, just deciding if I want to play turn one sleeper. I think I do, and then turn two. Spar's headquarters plus pump the sleeper. Oh, interesting. Uh, let's see. Do I want a daze? A two drop, how badly? Oh, that's interesting too. Let's go Spara's headquarters, pump sleeper. Now I'm not that worried. If I have to daze by picking up a land, I can do that. Hopefully I don't. Hopefully Jaybro just has another tap land this turn. No, and is it a Cobra or something? Oh, green suns for one, sure. I could daze it, but I kind of feel like just Elvish Mystic is not the worst thing in the world. Ooh, Inquisition. Yeah, might as well do it now, I guess. Well, might as well, indeed. Uh, Oko taking, Oko leaving Finale, Confluence, and Lands, sure. Mm. Soaring, hit for two, and I'm just going to put Luris into my hand here. And then next turn, I can, because of the Spar's Headquarters plus Swamp, I can cast Luris and replay Mishra's Bobble. I'd like to daze Mystic Confluence, but I think I probably daze a finale for two here. Because letting, letting you get Scavenging Ooze out doesn't seem great, because I assume that's going to be the, the finale card. Finale for one, I can't really daze, so that's fine. Okay, and then Mystic Confluence, we can we can deal with that. If I draw a way to kill the Elvish Mystic, that would be crazy too. Any Witherbloom commands? No. Uh, Bayou isn't bad though, because now I can go Black White Luris. Bobble, Bobble J Bro, Sea Island, and then 
make this into a 3-3 and send, and then now draw an extra card off Bauble. Now you can Mystic Confluence, bounce my two creatures and draw a card, but that's just not the end of the world for me. Ooh, Mox Opal is actually pretty nice. I get to replay Bauble. So Jabril kind of wants to do it now. Well, if you wait, it gets pretty bad for you because now I get to go Mishra's Bauble. Okay. I might get to Bauble twice. <laughs> uh, let's just attack here and see what see what Jibro does. No plays, huh? I will play Mox Opal. Has all the mana I need, so I'm just going to go brainstorm here. Whew. We got action. Uh, I can put Swamp and From the Catacombs back, play a land, and then go Deep Cavern Bat. And now, to Mystic Confluence this, you have to make me pay twice. And then I get to, uh, yeah, I get to either, either you let me, you can't let me confluence the bat. So if you want to counter it, you have to man double mana leak it. I mean, I guess you could do some other weird combo. Just draw a card X3. I love J-Rose style. Great play. All right. <laughs> All right. I feel like we're in pretty good shape here. Let's bobble j Row to see what his top card is. It's a Black Cleave Cliffs. Ooh. I would say I feel bad for Jabro, but I don't. Um, Krasis is gone, Skull Clamp, and this costs three to use, right? So let's just go Mesmeric Fiend. No, nothing to get there. But I just want another creature in play for Skull Clamp. Jabro is going to draw Black Cleave Cliffs, and then it's just going to lose, basically. You can block the Evolved Sleeper, and you go to two, or I guess is the is the idea here. Okay, let's draw. Let's bobble. Bobble. Let's see what your top card is. Okay, in that case, we just we don't have to do anything. We just win. And pass the turn. And then draw. And then Ujabo draws. Uh, that and is done. All right. Well, 2-0 with Evie's deck, and uh, let's get to round three with mine. I thought uh, I thought it was it was worth watching this deck. This deck's so sick. So, let me know if you like that little treat. <laughs> All right, time for actual round three, playing the five colored the lands deck yeah, against Slacks. All right, I'm a, I'm gonna run this. Look, I'm on the play. If I draw a blue source, I have remand. If I draw any land, I have Spellbinder. And if I draw red, I've got Minsk and Boo into Teferi with Cosmic Rebirth for the Spellbinder. Surely this hand can't go wrong. Man, I don't do I have to go back to playing my deck after playing Ely's deck? Like wouldn't it can I just play like another round? Unfortunately, or fortunately, Ely's back, so he's gonna play his round three. But my record in this draft is three and one. <laughs> Two-o with Ely's deck, one one with mine. Alright. Let's go ahead and draw. Oh, oh, is that a Sylvan Carry Tid? Why would I ever mulligan this hand if I'm drawing Sylvan Carry Tid? <laughs> Turn three, Minsk and Boo is a bootiful. Let's see if we can if we can get that going here. I guess ideally Jesse's play is to pump the student twice. All right. All right. Any land or I'm really unlucky. <laughs> Wasn't close. Minsk and Boo. Yes. Put three plus one plus one counters on it. Pass the turn. No reason to hit for four and let my Minsk and Boo get whacked. Jesse now has the, the of course, duo threat. Do you do, deal with Minsk and Boo? Or do you deal with the, the boo? If you deal with one, you must sometimes can deal with both, but like with a three power creature in play, even if you've got removal for boo, you can hit Minsk and Boo down to one. The next turn I have another four four in play, and this is a two loyalty. And because I'm of course drawing another land, I'll get to Teferi, untap two lands, and play remand. It also means I'm drawing a blue source, because that I don't the play doesn't work otherwise. I have a lot of uh theories here. <laughs> Let's see what uh what Jesse's got. Okay. Let's see. Three mana. Hopefully it's not flicker with Skyclave for Minsk and Boo. All right. The game doesn't just end, but that is pretty good still. Um, let's go Elite Spellbinder. Your hand is Heliod, Fractured Identity, Loran. I guess I'll just take the Fractured Identity and Loran and Heliod, huh? Uh, 
do I want to trade four for... Yeah, I actually don't mind attacking here, I don't think. I'm at 17, you're at 20. Yeah, that it seems okay. It's basically trading four for three. Because if... Uh, Slacks isn't gonna isn't that likely to double block. You could, but if he attacks back with Skyclave, I block with Elite Spellbinder, and that works out. I think pretty well. Oh, what did we draw? Oh, just doing this. We're just gonna pump it once though, because we're gonna want to play Heliod probably, or, or are we doing something else? If Slacks drew a planes and, and can just go all the way, that would on Student of War for up to seven. That would be something. Okay, I take. Any land gets me to Teferi or Tracker plus Remand up, which would be nice. All right, land. No, but that's really good too. Let's go Palace Jailer. Um, I think I just exile the Student of Warfare here. And I think I'm just attacking for seven. Like, you're not close to having Heliod. Uh, oh, wait, it's five, not seven. Oh. Yeah, no, I guess I actually should have just should have just left one of those back because Heliod is about to become a creature. Oh, the Wandering Emperor is an annoying one too. You're at nine. Oh, I guess I just take nine, take seven. You get your Student of Warfare back, but now you would make a token, I guess, and then I get to attack back for a lot of damage. There's a lore in at hand still. Oh, you're exiling Boo and gaining two. All right, there's Flooded Strand. So there's I Island. This is a 2-2. Two -two. Hmm. Yeah, I definitely should have left the thing back. That was just foolish. Foolish of me, but it's okay. I think what I'm going to do here is go get lost on the Student of Warfare. And then... Attack Slax, attack the Wandering Emperor, and this kills the Wandering Emperor. I get the initiative back. Heliod turns into not a creature anymore, and I have a blocker for Skyclave, and I have Remand up. Okay. And I also have Cosmic Rebirth up if I need to. Okay. We're going to use some map tokens on this Skyclave. Very reasonable, very reasonable. Can't cast Fracture Identity yet, because that costs seven. Yeah, I just discounted Heliod completely. It was just playing way too fast. Uh, and, oh, this costs three mana, so we can successfully remand this. I like the idea of there. Four mana. Five mana. Othari? If this is Othari, then I'm just definitely remanding it. I don't know what's going on. Um, basically, that last turn, I sh think I should have left Minsk and Boo untapped. Is probably the the, the jam. Lauren of the Third Path. Um, I think I am gonna remand that. I'll just get a Tundra because I kind of just wanna use my mana here. Oh, Prismatic Ending. That is not bad either. No plays? You're not even using the map tokens, huh? Your hand is Loran plus unknowns. Interesting. Mm. Huh. I don't know what's going on, but I'm just going to attack with my two creatures, I guess. I don't... I don't know what Slax is saving the mana for. We will find out shortly. And I am just going to attack first and then decide what to play afterwards. If Slax doesn't want to use the map tokens, are you, are you maybe cracking the Fiery Islet to draw a card? That seems worse than using map tokens. And getting a plus one, plus one counter on Skyclave Apparition seems pretty valuable. And remember, if the Skyclave dies, I get a 4-4. Four, four. Oh, Containment Priest. Oh, okay. That solves the mystery, sure. Mm -hmm. You're at seven, you're going to four. I 
could prismatic ending the skyclave i could prismatic ending the heliod i guess i'm worried about walking ballista for two land heliod it i think that would be pretty bad for me but i am at six i have to worry a little bit about skyclave i think you have lauren in hand i guess i don't care too much about that um I don't really have a good thing to, to Cosmic Rebirth here. I could Tracker plus Prismatic and then I go to four. I guess that's probably fine. No. Let's just go Prismatic ending the Skyclave. Blue, white, green. And then play this and go to four. But I have a Cosmic Rebirth to gain three life by targeting Flooded Strand. And I think that leaves me in the best spot. Seasoned Engineer. Okay. Uh, yeah, Jesse does not know that uh, we've got Elite Spellbinder plus Renin 6. That was the other part of the equation. Was that's th Because that's lethal, I feel like I can just do that. Oh, and we're not using the map token because we want to gain three lives. So let's just attack with the Elite Spellbinder and go for the red and six kill. And then now you can't uh, tap Fiery Islet to, to uh, oh, I even get this. You can't even tap Fiery Islet for mana now, which is nice. So it's really hard to have a counter spell. Drawing Sylvan Carry to this game was pretty good. All right, I guess I already played a land, whatever. Red and six. <laughs> you can sack the, the land to gain, to, to draw a card and then, and then die to red and six, all right. Up a game, up a game, and let's see. Playing against White Weenie, do we want to side in like Bonfire? This deck didn't seem that small. Fairy Mastermind to attack Planeswalkers, Elspeth. Cosmic Rebirth actually seems kind of bad. I know he has Anduril in his deck too, so maybe I just bring in a Braid and kind of hope that I have the mana to cast it. Spellqueller also seems like it could be good, but I do like all the all the removals, just so good. I think I like the Ephemerate too. Yeah, let's just do the Spell Quiller. I think it's just gonna be a little easier to cast here. Okay, game two on the draw. And sure, I mean, yeah, I will keep this hand. It's not the best hand. Slax is mulliganing, I have a Wasteland. Getting to like Prismatic ending your first play, Wasteland you, and then maybe try to Tireless Tracker from there. I think could be pretty good. Turn one Ancient Tomb Reckoner Bankbuster. Oh, well, the Wasteland's going to go pretty pretty well, <laughs> given that. Does Jesse not have a land? No, he does have a land. And the Mother of Runes. All right, I'll Prismatic Ending the Mother of Runes. I could wait in Prismatic Ending the Bankbuster, but that just seems like I'm setting myself up for failure. All right. I was hoping the wasteland would get me there. Oh no, oh no. Dark Depths is not like a terrible draw in the sense that it now means Thespian Stage is a great draw, but I think a uh, Bank Buster drawing cards is gonna be a pretty big threat if I don't draw a third land this turn, like an actual one. I think I still go get my tap Temple Garden now. All right, land, we got it. Oh yeah, easy land. Let's go Elite Spellbinder to prevent the four drop like a comet or a seasoned engineer from hitting the board. Containment Priest, Karn, Skyclave, Lauren. Um, I don't care about Lauren, don't care about Containment Priest. I guess I'll take Skyclave or make Skyclave more expensive. No, I'll just make I'll just make the Karn more expensive. Part of it is like Skyclave, if I take Skyclave and you just go Karn on four, Skyclave on five, that is just not great for me. So I don't love it. And then I'll pass, and then Jesse's going to draw with Reckoner Bankbuster here. and uh, Or play Containment Priest. I guess that's the decision. You know you can Containment Priest into Skyclave. But the other thing is, I kind of like Skyclave being used on this thing when I have some pretty good plays of my own here that I would not want to get Skyclaved. Okay, we drew the fourth land. Now we're going to Skyclave, presumably. Oh, we're just bank bustering all the way to the top. Sure. That's also fine. 
Okay, still would like land here. Drawing the <clears throat> one was a start. If I miss, I can go Tireless Tracker plus Dark Depths to get a clue token. I don't mind that so much. Oh, are we going to use the treasure to Skyclave? Gotcha. All right. Or I could just draw a stage. Uh, another land. Now I think I do play Tireless Tracker still. I could play Dryad and two lands, but then I wouldn't have any clues. So I kind of want to just do this. And then I have Ephemerate in case it tries to do something to the Tireless Tracker. I don't really want to use the Ephemerate here, so I'm going to try not to. Also, Containment Priest in response to Ephemerate is really bad for me. Lauren, blow up the clue, sure. That doesn't bother me too much. Sadly, the clue does not, uh, it's only when you sacrifice a clue you get a counter on this. All right, I'm gonna take a little damage here. Take it. And we're facing down a Containment Priest. There's a Karn waiting in the wings as well. Revoker, okay. We're revoking like Minsk and Boo or something. Let's see. Tireless Tracker. Uh, that's not a very good play. A rare miss for Slacks. Jesse, Jesse does not usually miss stuff like that. Um, I could play the Teferi, but I kind of want to just play this and then make some clues, and then I can protect Tracker or protect Teferi with my with my stuff. Mm. Okay, so now I'm going to crew the bank buster. I think I'm just going to take it again. Go to nine here, because nothing else can attack, I imagine. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to get to crack a clue end of turn here. And soon the tireless tracker is going to be too big. We each draw a card, sure. Makes sense. I'm drawing a lot more cards than Jesse, so this kind of evens it up. And... We're cracking this to draw a card as well. All right, we're going all in on firing it all on all, all the cylinders here. All right, let's crack a clue then. Name Tireless Tracker, huh? <laughs> Red and six, okay. And Mana Leak and Oraman would both be really good draws here. Oh, Minsk and Boo is not bad. What to do, what to do. Play my land, get under Clue. I kind of want to just play my Planeswalkers, but the not the not Teferi ones. Uh, let's go green, red, Minsk and Boo. Um, let's go ahead and make a token, put three counters on it. And I'm gonna attack. I'm gonna attack with the boo, I think, or maybe I just don't attack with anyone. Play Renin six now, and then kill. I think I kill the Lauren actually. The reason I want to kill Lauren is, I don't care about you crewing the Bankbuster. You have enough idiots to crew Bankbuster, so I could kill the pilot. But I'm winning by a lot now. I do not want us drawing more cards. I don't want Jesse finding Othari or something like that. Like, that would be a, specifically a pretty annoying card. So, let's see what you got. You could play Karn if you get to six mana, which you're not at right now. Anduril Flame of the West. Okay. That's, that's acceptable. You're going to get to attack with the Revoker and make two 1-1s. One and what do I trade with here? I mean, obviously I could trade with Boo, but I kind of want to, hmm, I have two clues. Maybe I trade with the tracker. I, I could also take it. I'm just looking at like throwing Minsk and Boo because that seems like a pretty nice one. There's a Containment Priest in play too. I got to watch out for that. Dryad adds a lot of mana. Let's actually just block with Tireless Tracker. I, I've already gotten a lot of the value out of it, I feel like. So let's do this. Draw. I would not like to make another Minsk and Boo token. Okay. Um, I think I just 
minus two and draw four cards. I don't know, it seems reasonable to me. Sack Boo. I think I nug the Containment Priest. Because if I draw anything that's good with Ephemerate here, it just becomes awesome. That's pretty bad, all right. How much mana do I have? Three, six, seven, eight, nine, basically nine mana. Let's draw with a clue token here. Because I would like to find Palace Jailer or Solitude if I can. Um, I guess not, wow. Okay. So, or, or Thespian Stage. <laughs> Really, I had a lot of cards that I could have drawn that were really good here. What am I going to do now? Do I care about this this thing attacks? I guess I could stop Anderol by playing Teferi and minusing it. I think that's probably what I do. Noga Spirit Token. Oh, the problem with playing Teferi, though, is I'm going to Noga Spirit Token either way. I have no other blockers in play. And then... The rest of this bivouac can also attack. Yeah, let's actually just play a bunch of idiots here. Play Blade Splicer, play Sylvan Karyatid, and I think play the Restless Vinestalk and a Savannah. And pass the turn. And now you do get to kill Minsk and Boo here, which is unfortunate. Ren and Six, I guess, lives. And then I have Teferi to look for. And I can still clean all this up pretty nicely with Palace Jailer or Solitude. And but the Enderil is, is, is kind of a kind of a threat now. Hmm. Alright. Oh, was this the Othari? Oh, Fracture Identity on Minsk and Boo. Okay. Uh, all right, all right. This could be okay. Do you have a way to, you're gonna equip the bank buster. So now I guess I'm just gonna get to use Ephemerate pretty well here. Wow, this actually was like, I kind of feel less bad for me than it could have been otherwise. Because now I think I Ephemerate the Blade Splicer. And then go block block with a first striker I guess just chump that I take one and I have a bunch of attackers now and then ephemerate on upkeep I'll ephemerate the blade splicer again I think that's totally good draw oh there's recruiter of the guard all right well a little late for the solitude exactly but this is still looking very good now I even have a restless fine stock can I actually kill let's see five I can't, I can Teferi, that's five, eight, four. oh wait, I just have lethal now, I think. Let's, Restless Vinestock attacks for five, eight, 14, yeah, all right. I mean, I assume Jesse doesn't have anything here. Teferi, minus three Skyclave, animate the rest, Restless Vinestock, nice, nice. Attack with everything. Boom. And that's how you get round three. Excellent. <laughs> All right. After uh, pulling out a 2-1 and the uh, pretty sweet match with Ely's deck ended up, our teams drew. We got a uh, 6-6. Six and six. Ely went 3-0. I went 2-1. Uh, Salvato went 0-3. And Frog went 1-2. A perfect balance. A 3-0, an 0-3, a 2-1, and a 1-2. We all walk away with a draw. Played some fun cube. This deck was not very good. I'm ecstatic that I went 2-1 with this deck. So here's the positive of the deck, just a little post-mortem. Parallax Wave, Leyline Binding, Prismatic Ending, Solitude, Palace Jailer, especially in con concert with Ephemerate for some of those, and then Get Lost. I had a lot of ways to remove permanence, and some decks that were more based on permanence I think could be vulnerable to that. Also had Minsk and Boo. That card's pretty good. And like Red and Six with three fetches and a Wasteland. The main problem is no busted cards, like no Time Walker Moxes. Not every deck has those, that's fine. But not a whole lot of ways to accelerate. I had like Talisman, Sylvan Karyatid. At one point I could have taken a Noble over a Fetchland. But even then, I think I'd be a little slow. And then 
besides, I guess, Minsk and Boo and then the Depths combo, which never came together, I didn't have any heavy hitters either. Like, those are my two finishers. I guess Teferi and sometimes Golos can do that, but... Basically, this deck ended up being good against creatures and kind of bad elsewhere. And then my draws against the Jun deck, which I don't think was actually even a terrible matchup, uh, were bad enough that I didn't really get to get much traction there. So happy enough with the 2-1, happy enough with the tie, and uh, move on to the next. I do like Get Lost. That's a pretty cool new spell. All right. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you hanging out as I drafted White Removal here is basically all I was doing. But uh, we'll be back tomorrow with another draft, probably more blue cards if I were to hazard a guess. So I will see you then for the next draft. Thanks for watching.